Analysis, is $900 billion insufficient? Xi Jinping may need tenfold the amount? Historian, writer, and strategic analyst Gregory Copley has written an article on oilprice.com, claiming that, according to internal information from the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping's visit to San Francisco for the APEC meeting includes a request to Biden for $900 billion in aid to salvage the endangered real estate market. What is the probability of this scenario unfolding? Political analysis commentator, Professor Zhang Tianliang, does not believe that this news is true. Could it be because the amount that Xi Jinping wants might be 10 times this? Some of us may be astonished by this figure, but let's delve deeper into the analysis with Professor Zhang and explore the main reasons behind his skepticism. Firstly, the funding the U.S. can provide to the CCP isn't solely under President Biden's control. It's futile for Xi Jinping to request from Biden since the approval of funds requires congressional approval. Given the current relationship between the United States and the CCP it's highly improbable that Congress would approve. The United States not only won't provide relief to the CCP but will also make every effort to ensure that the CCP doesn't receive funds from the United States or other countries. As previously reported, on November 22, the U.S. Republican lawmakers were pushing for legislation in both houses of Congress, hoping to empower Congress with accountability over the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and prevent the IMF from providing funds to the enemies of the U.S., such as the CCP, Iran, and North Korea. The proposal came from Republican Congressman Scott Franklin of Florida. According to this bill, the U.S. representative within the International Monetary Fund cannot vote on any special drawing rights, SDR, allocation, quota increase, or policy modification favorable to certain countries. Although SDR isn't a currency itself, it is an asset, akin to a currency mix known as a basket of currencies. Your SDR withdrawal rights, held in the International Monetary Fund, can be converted into the corresponding hard currency. On the International Monetary Fund's official website, the basket of currencies comprises the US dollar, euro, Chinese yuan, Japanese yen, and British pound. What are their respective weights? The US dollar holds 43.38%, the euro 29.31%, the Chinese yuan 12.28%, the Japanese yen 7.59%, and the British pound 7.44%. Essentially, these five currencies are amalgamated to create an international currency, termed a basket of currencies. Given China's 12.28% withdrawal right, it can exchange this right in the International Monetary Fund for hard currency, such as US dollars. In other words, the Chinese Communist Party can obtain US dollars through the special drawing right provided by the IMF. This is what the United States House of Representatives seeks to prevent. Through an accountability bill, it intends to disallow U.S. representatives from voting in favor of such bills and prevent support for the redistribution of weights, among other things. Currently, several Republican members of the House of Representatives support this initiative, and in the Senate, Republican senators like Ted Cruz from Texas and Rick Scott from Florida also express support. Therefore, this bill has joint proposals in both the House of Representatives and the Senate, with the potential to become law. As mentioned earlier, it involves complex economic issues. However, it is crucial to understand that the United States aims to hinder the CCP from currency exchange through the IMF's SDR. Even if Xi Jinping wishes to request dollars from the United States, specifically from Biden, Biden cannot provide them as he lacks the funds, and Congress is opposed to such a move. Consequently, Xi Jinping cannot make a request to Biden for dollars. Secondly, the U.S. is grappling with severe economic challenges. The current inflationary situation in the United States is challenging to rein in, leading to continuous interest rate hikes. Currently, interest rates in the United States have reached a significant level. Many individuals are refraining from borrowing money, and even if they wish to, they find it unaffordable. For instance, the current interest rate for a 30-year loan in the United States for purchasing a house can go up to 8%. Over a year ago, this rate was only 4%, possibly even in the 3% range. Consequently, what used to be a $1,500 interest payment that individuals could manage has now doubled, 
possibly reaching $3,000. Consequently, many people are finding it increasingly challenging to afford a home. Mr. Zhang said that this situation is altering the dynamics of supply and demand in the market, and it's conceivable that housing prices may experience a decline next year. Furthermore, the U.S. government is struggling to cope with inflation, which is currently proving somewhat uncontrollable. Simultaneously, the U.S. government is financially strained to the point of being on the verge of a shutdown. Whether it's the Russia-Ukraine war or conflicts in the Middle East, funding is required, and Congress is in a state of turmoil due to these issues. Both political parties have been engaged in disputes for three weeks, leading to internal conflicts within Congress, including within the Republican Party. Given the financial strain pushing the U.S. government towards a shutdown, it raises the question of where they would source $900 billion to provide assistance to Xi Jinping. Mr. Zhang said that this situation is altering the dynamics of supply and demand in the market, and it's conceivable that housing prices may experience a decline next year. Furthermore, the U.S. government is struggling to cope with inflation, which is currently proving somewhat uncontrollable. Simultaneously, the U.S. government is financially strained to the point of being on the verge of a shutdown. Whether it's the Russia-Ukraine war or conflicts in the Middle East, funding is required, and Congress is in a state of turmoil due to these issues. Both political parties have been engaged in disputes for three weeks, leading to internal conflicts within Congress, including within the Republican Party. Given the financial strain pushing the U.S. government towards a shutdown, it raises the question of where they would source $900 billion to provide assistance to Xi Jinping. Thirdly, China's economic problems cannot be solved with $900 billion. The estimated local government debt is a conservative 65 trillion yuan, which exceeds 9 trillion U.S. dollars, making repayment practically impossible. What happens when local governments default on their debt? Some have chosen to redeem only 70% of the principal for bonds bought by the public for local financing. This is euphemistically termed discounted redemption or the invisible debt resolution plan. While these phrases may sound positive, they conceal a harsh reality. Presently, Buzhou, a local government in Jinyi, Guizhou, China, has implemented this invisible debt resolution plan. Buzhou State Investment Corporation has wiped out 30% of its debt using this approach, redeeming only 70%. Previously owing over 400 million yuan to Zhongtai Trust, a financial institution, they now repay only 300 million through the discounted redemption or invisible debt resolution method, leaving the remainder unaddressed. So, despite the seemingly favorable terms like invisible debt resolution, it essentially boils down to a money grab. In practical terms, 30% of the principal invested has been confiscated by the government. The local debt is currently experiencing defaults, and this situation is a direct result of the collapse of the real estate market. According to Bloomberg, the CCP is formulating a plan to address the fallout from the real estate market's collapse. The plan, as described by Bloomberg, involves the CCP drafting a list to guide financial institutions in supporting the real estate industry through loans, debts, and equity financing. The so-called loan support strategy means that even if it's evident that you cannot repay the existing debt, the solution is to provide new loans forcefully. This involves borrowing new money to repay old debts. For example, if you were supposed to repay 50 billion this year but couldn't manage the 50 billion in interest, the approach would be to lend you 60 billion, allowing you to use 50 billion to repay the old debt. This concept is essentially about borrowing new money to repay old debts. Another method involves debt-to-equity conversion. If you borrowed $50 billion and can't repay it, you might offer a portion of your company's shares, converting the debt into equity. However, this converted equity doesn't genuinely resolve the problem because these shares can't be sold to others, making them illiquid. Consequently, this money remains stuck in the bank, ultimately becoming bad debt and requiring write-offs. However, the CCP doesn't have many options. Despite knowing that you can't repay, they still lend money to you, aiming to ensure that you at least complete the construction of the buildings. The completion of the buildings allows you to provide an explanation to property owners, preventing protests on the streets. Government spending on stability maintenance is avoided, and funds are directed towards completing the buildings. Once the construction is finished, residents move in, and everything appears fine. 
Currently, the CCP is planning to compel banks to convert debt into equity or force them to provide loans to real estate companies to address the debt crisis. The regulatory authorities of the CCP are creating a white list of 50 real estate companies, with those on the list receiving government assistance. One such company is Country Garden, heavily indebted, possibly more than Evergrande. Other companies on the list include Vank, New City Holdings, Longu Group, and more. On November 17, the People's Bank of China Financial Supervision Bureau and the China Securities Regulatory Commission jointly held a symposium emphasizing equal treatment of differently owned real estate development companies by all financial institutions. The regulatory authorities also mandate banks to provide loans to private real estate developers based on the average industrial growth rate. Essentially, the CCP is forcing banks to allocate funds to private real estate companies, including central state-owned enterprises, SOEs. However, there are regulatory policies for bank loans, and banks are reluctant to continue lending to organizations that can't repay their debts due to the impact on profitability. The last resort is compulsory execution, involving agencies like the Ministry of Public Security or the Ministry of State Security holding guns to the heads of bank officials and forcing them to issue loans under the threat of life and property risks. Providing loans, however, results in these bad debts ultimately strangling the banks. A previous program discussed how the Ministry of State Security issued a document intervening in finance. The Ministry of State Security, a mysterious department in China, lacks its own website but uses a WeChat public account to publish articles intervening in finance. The document mentions prioritizing preventing and resolving financial risks, actively participating in the economic and financial sectors, constructing the national security protection system, closely monitoring national security risks in the financial sector, making accurate predictions, effectively preventing and legally combating illegal and criminal activities that harm national security in the financial sector. With this authorization, the Ministry of State Security can potentially use force to compel banks to issue loans. While this scenario may seem absurd, it's not unimaginable in China and is essentially akin to robbery, taking money from banks to give to private enterprises. Given the massive scale of China's local debt, if Xi Jinping is requesting only $900 billion from Biden, it's woefully insufficient. Therefore, if Xi Jinping were to make a request, he would need $9 trillion US dollars. Therefore, Mr. Zhang concluded that when Xi Jinping goes to San Francisco to request $900 billion from Biden, it's not very credible, and the likelihood is quite small. How Xi Jinping Tackles Financial Challenges Regarding this issue, Mr. Zhang Tianliang believes that, despite considering it non-existent, there is indeed an intention on the part of Xi Jinping. The CCP is currently in urgent need of USD to stabilize the exchange rate. Xi Jinping's request to Biden for USD is easily understandable given the CCP's pressing need for foreign currency. To illustrate the gravity of the situation, the CCP has been selling 40 to 50 billion US dollars in US Treasury bonds every month. The interest rate on these bonds is 5.5%, significantly higher than the decreasing interest rates, around 2%, in CCP's banks. Consequently, individuals with available funds aim to convert their RMB into USD and invest in US Treasury bonds, ensuring a 5.5% return. From a national perspective, accumulating more USD and investing in USD-denominated bonds emerge as the most effective means of preserving assets. The recent sale of US Treasury bonds by China, bringing their holdings below 800 billion US dollars, once reaching 1.1 trillion US dollars, underscores the CCP's critical shortage of USD. Xi Jinping is responding to the financial challenge by introducing new figures in the financial sector. Initially planning to appoint Zhu Xin, chairman of Citic Group, as the central bank's new governor, the CCP has adjusted its strategy. Recent reports from Reuters suggest that Zhu Xin will head China's state administration of foreign exchange, SAFE, and concurrently serve as the central bank's vice president, with the announcement expected this week. Additionally, there are other appointments such as Liu Chunhang, the son-in-law of former Premier Wen Jiabao, 
taking charge of the Technology Supervision Department of the newly established State Administration for Market Regulation, SAMR, and Li Chang becoming the director of the Central Financial and Economic Affairs Commission Office. This signals a significant personnel reshuffle in Xi Jinping's financial team. Xi Jinping has always harbored a deep-seated aversion to finance, viewing it as a factor that diverts China's economy from reality into the virtual realm. However, given the current circumstances, he feels compelled to address financial matters. If he fails to resolve the existing financial challenges, the individuals he recently appointed will bear the responsibility for the financial quagmire. Hence, although it may appear that Xi Jinping is delegating significant responsibilities to these individuals, their political standing is not particularly secure. Within Xi Jinping's close circle, unless you avoid practical tasks, such as exclusively focusing on ideology, similar to individuals like Wang Huning, where right or wrong remains unverifiable and there is no one to debate with, this role may provide relative safety. Another type of role involves serving Xi Jinping, assisting in matters related to his security, etc. In this scenario, as long as you wholeheartedly fulfill your duties, even if it involves spending substantial amounts of money, employing a large workforce, and causing chaos domestically or internationally, as long as you ensure Xi Jinping's safety, it doesn't matter. As a result, individuals in these two categories might have slightly more stable positions, such as Wang Huning and Kai Chi. However, for others, the moment they engage in tasks, the likelihood of making mistakes is significant. For example, Li Chang's appointment as the director of the Central Financial and Economic Affairs Commission may not be advantageous for him. As soon as you start working, you must adhere to Xi Jinping's commands, and if Xi Jinping issues misguided instructions, those responsible for specific tasks and executions will bear the blame when problems arise. Therefore, within Xi Jinping's inner circle, true safety is a rare commodity. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. If you find the information helpful, please share this video with a friend to watch together. This will be a great source of motivation for our team to produce more and more quality and reliable videos. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you for tuning in.